これより第4試合を行います青コーナー198センチ116キロエメリアンコーアレキーサンダーアレキサンダーアレキサンダーアレキサンダーアレキサンダーアレキサンダーアレキサンダージョシーバーネットジョシュ、ドベビーフェイス、アサシン・バーネット、is 28-6-3, 255 pounds, 1 and 2 in Pride Fighting Championships。And we saw it there momentarily on the screen, seconding him to the ring, former Shudo Lightweight Heavyweight Champion Eric Paulson, who he spent over a month in California working with in preparation for this fight, and also on hand in Barnett's corner, one of the top cup men anywhere in the combative sport. Is Stitch Jacob Duran? And of course, in Emilian Enko's corner, his brother, the Pride World Heavyweight Champion, Fyodor Emilian Enko. How do you see this one going down? Who is the better striker? Who's better on the ground, Trig? I think Josh is better on the ground, and I think Alexander's better on his feet. But both guys have been working on both positions, so we'll see how this pans out. Oh, great shot. Excellent work by Josh to duck that punch and get in there as quick as he can. Good job of defending the shoot by Barnett. Barnett has won 29 of his 30 MMA fights within the first 10 minutes, while Emilianenko has never gone past the second round. So having said that, we can expect this one to maybe end early. Nice knee by Emilianenko. Good. Clinch and knee. Good job by Josh. Get his head up. Get away from those knees as best he can. Try to pummel inside now. You saw Barnett trying to go for dominant position. Again, a look at Theodore you Emilianenko. It looks like Barnett may have got an inadvertent poke in the eye. And uh, let's face it, for Josh Barnett, uh, times have not exactly been easy in pride in his debut against Mirko Krokop. He, of course, suffered a freak shoulder injury, was on the uh, shelf for a year, and now uh, let's hope that uh, he's able to continue, because, again, one of the more looked forward to contests between Barnett and Emelianenko. And this match will indeed continue. Excellent. Good. Good work. Good work. Good sportsmanship there, touching gloves, and Battle resumes. <laughs> See that Alexander Milianenko, a lot more calmer, cooler, very precise in his striking, while there seems to be a lot of nervous energy coursing through the veins of Barnett. You know, Josh always does better when he's a little bit more patient than this in, in the first round. He's, he's kind of um, le letting, even though Josh has a lot more head movement. Oh, he's letting oh, he Alexander, gets... wow. That one stung, and now Barnett missing with a one-two combination. And you can see Emilianenko, great footwork. He's letting Emilianenko right now control the pace of this fight. So as a result, you know, Josh spent a lot of time backing up, moving, circling. And that's one thing he told us in the interview that he did not want to do is let Emilianenko control the fight. Million Anko, nice uppercut, and again, has Barnett on the ropes. Barnett with the overhooks. Good job getting out of those overhooks positions, Million Anko. He did nice great work. Body combination there by Barnett. Go one, two downstairs. Misses with the wild overhand right, however. You know what, Mark? We don't see enough of that in mixed martial arts. Uh, good jabs and good body blows. And it's good to see, uh, um, see these guys trying to work both angles. Bring up a good point. Emelianenko definitely very comfortable in the stand-up. And again, he continues to improve with each outing. Backs away from Barnett. Nice and relaxed. Alexander looks incredibly relaxed right now. And it seems so far he's done a better job of gauging the distance. <laughs> nice uppercut by Emelianenko. Good head motion by Josh. Get out of the way of those, of those three punches that came right after that. And there is Fyodor Emelianenko shouting out instructions to his brother. I'm sure he hopes that his sibling will 
be the one to join him in the second round. Nice right there by Barnett. Mm, good contact by Alexander. Trying, starting to find Josh's head, even though he's moving around a little bit. Josh did a good job, though, getting inside and tying him up. Now Barnett going to the body with some knees. Barnett comes back with a body shot. But again, Emelianenko doing a great job of avoiding most of those strikes. And it seems to me that Barnett is expending a lot of energy in delivering them, Trick. He is, because he's always having to die for it. He's not just stopping for it. He has to jump forward almost two steps to get every punch to connect. Barnett content to stay in the stand-up with Emelianenko. Then a nice shot to the body. Might even see him attempt to deliver some kicks to set up a shoot. Instead, he's just in a brawl here with Emelianenko. I think right now both guys have finally settled into their game a little bit more. You don't see Josh using a lot, a lot of expended energy right now. And, and you see Emelianenko still stepping forward. Alexander still doing a great job of, of pushing the pace of this fight. Good head motion by Josh, really trying to get out of the way and causing Alexander to stop throwing punches because he's starting to waste energy every time he misses. Nice jab there by Emelianenko. We've passed the five minute mark of round number one. As we've seen Emelianenko since his debut at Bushido One, a split decision victory over Suario Silva. We've seen him not only improve his conditioning but become much more comfortable with Good the underhooks. entire fight game in terms of handling the media and stuff. Uh, I wish Josh would step forward that he had two great underhooks. He didn't step forward fast enough. He's even showcased a sense of humor by quipping one advantage that he has over Barnett is that he's younger than him. Nice jab there by Barnett. You know, Josh, Josh acts a lot younger. Well, he definitely uh, does love anime, comic books, video games. Let's not forget cars. His quaff here. He has a 2004 Mystic Chrome Cobra, black 96 Mustang GT, and a 67 Torino in a Mercury Cyclone GT. So, giving Jay Leno a run for his money there, as Emelianenko gives him a run for his money here in the opening round. Now, Barnett jacks Emelianenko's jaw. Barnett hasn't been able to exploit the inside game. And and, and, you know, I, I would have really anticipated him trying to get inside if he, after getting struck like this. He hasn't even attempted a, a shot yet, a, a takedown attempt. And is it because he respects Emelianenko's power right now and his ability to defend it? Or is it just a fact, as we mentioned, that Emelianenko's thus far dictating the pace of this fight, controlling it? Emelianenko's dictating the pace of the fight. He's backing up, he's circling away. When he gets a good see how he steps forward, moves to his left. If Josh comes forward, you'll see him back up, just a slight step, and then move to his right again. See, Alexander does a great job. He's just outside of Josh's reign the whole time, so Josh can never really get a solid punch. He's just outside Josh's reach. That's very frustrating when you're trying to strike someone. And it is beginning to take its toll on the babyface assassin. Nice right jab there delivered by Emelianenko into the final three minutes of the opening round. Just picking his spots, Emelianenko measuring up Barnett. Barnett backs up along the ropes and gets again. Staggered with that shot. I mean, Emelianenko with plenty of pop behind those jabs. He's, he's really throwing a lot. He's doing like Muhammad Ali style jabs. You can almost knock you out with every jab he throws. Timeout called by the referee. Mouthpiece dropping. He's got to get it back in his mouth. Getting ready to go. Actually, I think it was just to ensure that uh, he was okay after receiving a shot to the proboscis, but the uh, action does resume. Emelianenko really measuring up Barnett now. Barnett 
Bruce. He has to maybe start going downstairs with some kicks here, does he not, Trig, to try to set up the shot? Because thus far, he's been stymied by Emelianenko in the striking department. Yeah, he needs it. really does. You're absolutely right. There, there you go. it is. Finally. He needs to start throwing leg kicks, though. He needs to get, get Alexander backing out. If a guy runs away from you, throw a punch, he backs out on you, got to throw a kick right after. Alexander's going to pick Josh apart a little bit more. You can see Emelianenko wants nothing to do with the clinch. He's pushing Barnett away. The training with his brother definitely paying off. Training in the mountains a of good his punch, of Russia. There's nothing more frustrating when you're really trying to push the pace of a fight like Josh is. You see the guy in front of you getting more and more relaxed the more you push the pace. There's a tie clinch and a knee delivered by Emelianenko, but Barnett oh. storms him with a knee of his own. Again, a look there at the Pride World Heavyweight Champion, definitely watching with vested interest as his brother battles the baby-faced assassin here as we head into the final minute of this opening round. And we mentioned one statistic that 29 of Barnett's 30 wins have happened within the first 10 minutes. That will not be the case in this one unless he delivers the home run here. And meanwhile, it's just a million ankle picking his shots, Trig, and just yeah. taking the toll on Barnett. He's, he's right now, he's selling himself in. He's, he knows Josh's range. He's starting to find Josh's rhythm and his timing. And he's starting to back himself out, keep himself well protected, and throw it out. Oh, good job by Josh, just missing that head kick. Now, that's what he's doing more of. He needs to be doing that earlier in this round, trying to chop his legs out, trying to kick, use his legs more for the leg kicking than every time a, a million ankle backs away from him. Again, just flashes that jab. A million ankle content to ride out the opening 10 minutes, knowing that he's stuck to his game plan and for the most part controlled this matchup. Barnett now moves in with five seconds remaining. And again, a million ankle simply backs away from the accomplished wrestler. Really would like to see Josh try to some takedowns in the second round. Really got to push the pace a little bit more. We can see Alexander bent over. He's actually being as patient as calm as he was. He seems to be exhausted right now sitting in his corner. I'm very surprised to see this because he, he, he did a great job selling it, even to me, sitting at ringside. He didn't look tired at all during the fight. As soon as that bell rang, he bent over in exhaustion. And that's the key. You do not want to let your opponent know you're tired. Good exchange here by Emelianenko. As you see, he's always backing up and circling away. Even though he's taking some shots, he's right just outside that reach where it's going to put him down for good. And Mealy throws back his good punching. His, his punch is a little wide, a little extended. Like to see some more strength punching by Alexander. But he's doing a good job right now and just really just picking Josh apart. Emelianenko is also a two-time Russian Sambo champion and also practices a special type of sambo that was popular among the military and police in the former Soviet Union called Commando Sambo, which includes striking. So we talk about Barnett perhaps wanting to try to take this to the ground, but again, Emelianenko not exactly uh, a junior when it comes to, to the ground game as well. He knows his submissions. I'd definitely like to see Josh still make the attempt because right now he's getting picked apart a little bit on his feet. You don't want to spend the next two rounds getting picked apart like that. We talk about how important the mental aspect of mixed martial arts is. How do you feel Barnett is doing mentally now, knowing that when he told us he thought that he was a better striker than Emelianenko, seeing that really that wasn't the case in the opening 10 minutes? Well, I, I think Josh is smart. He realizes he's a, he's a thinking man's kind of guy. He's not going to stay in the fight and keep trying to push a pace that's not working for him. Staying on his feet is not going to work for him. I think we'll see him shoot a couple more times. Josh is a smart kid. Plus, he's got a great camp with, with Stitch and with, with uh, Eric Paulson. They'll tell him for sure, start trying to take it down. Knowing Barnett the way you do, how do you, what do you recommend him, he do in, try, uh, in terms of trying to set up the shot? Use his hands to, to get inside as, as Alexander backs out, kick him in the legs, and then once he stops moving, take a real nice, hard double leg shot. Good sign of sportsmanship there from Emilian Enko. They touch gloves to begin the second round. Five minutes. Nice right there by Barnett, who again just comes straight ahead on Emilian Enko. Nice 
body shot again there by Barnett. Finally goes downstairs with an outside a little leg kick. You know, Barnett stays in success everywhere he's gone. A champion in the United States. Former king of pank race as well here in Japan. And now trying to establish himself as a force in pride. But facing the obstacle, Alexander Emelianenko. And let's not forget, Ma, the most important fact, he once broke my nose in training. Oh. Thanks, Josh. And there's oh, Barnett quick. with the takedown, as you called the trick. Finally got a low body lock. As you can see, he had, it, he had his arms, had a bear hug around his lower back, around Alexander's lower back. Oh, stepping right into a topside triangle. He might be able to sink this in. Got to get his head up, though, and slips out of it. They're, they're, Josh is really, really good on top. For, you know, it's amazing. All these heavyweights are really, really athletic. And in the positions they know, they know him very well. He is a submission specialist now raining down some left knees to the head of Emelianenko and exactly where Barnett wants to be following what was a frustrating opening 10 minutes. Looking to assert himself here on the ground. Can't, can't stay put here. He's got to keep moving. They're going to bring him back up to their feet. Josh has finally got this to the ground. He definitely wants to keep it here. Drops a hammer fist to the side and great movement by Barnett as a million oh, tries to scramble. Converge. Converge. He's got it locked. He's got it locked in. It's too straight though. He's got to pull it back to his body. There it is again. The key lock and there it is. Miracle, oh, he, tapped. Tapped out. he tapped. I think Emelianenko suffered some kind of an injury, but it's over just like that. Josh Barnett submits Alexander Emelianenko. Well, it took a minute 57 seconds of the second round. A reversal of fortunes, Trig. Josh Barnett is on his way to critical countdown absolute. Meanwhile, concern for the welfare of Alexander Emelianenko. Obviously, he must have felt something snap or pop. Yeah, it was kind of a weird position. He had, you know, a part of it is too is that when you hit submissions in a mixed martial arts fight, when you hit them late, after you realize that your opponent's a little bit tired, the submissions are easier to control. They're easier to hit. And looking at Emelianenko right now, it appears that he is absolutely actually in good physical condition so you're right he just uh is he as you see shaking hands now with Fyodor Emelianenko let's take a look back at what transpired here but, in the second round he really set everything up here earlier getting getting Alexander tired getting him to the ground and then hitting these couple of knee strikes here on the ground before he shifts position he misses one Kimura because he's in a scramble it gets slips out a little bit but he resets himself and gets right back into it and, See, it straightens out. Alexander does a good job of straightening out, counting, gets it back, but then he feeds it right back in the same spot. Josh keeps his head yep. down. With the Americana, right and it looked there like he was motioning that something was wrong with his shoulder or arm, but instead it was just the fact that Barnett was able to cinch the submission via the uh, Americana, and uh, a disappointed Alexander Emelianenko makes his way back to the dressing room. Meanwhile, Josh Barnett never met a microphone he didn't like. The babyface okay, assassin's got the stick. I gave my last speech in Japanese, so this one goes out to the American fans. I've come to take this tournament. I'm back. I'm here to show that pro wrestling is the strongest in the world. And I'm aiming for one man. Fiona, you are already dead. Oh my almost Were you surprised by him at all? No. You see, that's the thing is that I knew how damn tough he was. I knew that his hands were quick, hard puncher, good, tenacious. Uh, he had a lot of, uh, you know, openings and weak. I won't call them weaknesses, just parts of his game that aren't really complete or, or that that good yet. Because um, he's a young guy, but um, how hard he, were those punches? Well, he, uh, pretty hard. But when you've sparred with Maurice Smith, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to get hit any harder than that. Um, but He's the kind of guy that even where he has a weakness, he'll over he'll compensate for it by just trying his butt off, working his ass off, just not caring. He's not going to care if he's getting beat at a position. He's just going to get it out of there and win. And I know what that's like because that's how I was in the beginning of my career. Did you feel you had the, the submission before we tapped? Did you know you had it? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, it was kind of funny like that you say that, but you know, a lot of times when you know you got a submission, it's just sort of a, I won't say it's psychic, but it, it feels a little bit like a deja vu. I mean, you just know that it's there. And the first time I tried for the top wrist lock, um, you know, he defended it pretty good. He did a classic roll out, straightened his thumb. And I could have went for the straight arm lock, but I felt like I was a little too high on the wrist, low on the wrist. 
I'm like, all right, I'll just keep the position. I wanted to throw some more strikes, but he was he was loading up to try and get me to adjust position and try and flip me over. He's a, he likes to be kind of a brute on the mat, and he's big enough to do it, so who am I to tell him not to? But um, as soon as he brought that arm back up, I, he just brought it right back into my hands, and Billy Robinson, man, he's got me, uh, he's got me with like a, a, a viper on that. I don't know, that's not a good analogy. But, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, he, forgive me, I just got hit by a giant crazy Russian with a huge <laughs> reaper holding a baby on his back. I, mean, I think I deserve a little break. Anyhow, uh, so I got a hold of that bad boy. He, he laid right into the perfect grip for me, locked it up, boom, and all of a sudden uh, some nasty towel ripping noises came in his elbow, and I... I let go and I asked him if he was all right. I'll, you know, I, I mean, I like to win and I like to get a little, I don't really want to hurt anybody.